So welcome everyone. So just our webinar series uh, to uh, how to manage workload this evening. Uh, my name is William Harmon and I'm joined by my colleague, uh, Vincent Whelan. Uh, Vincent, do you want to say hello? Good evening, everybody. Thanks a million for joining us on this webinar this evening. Excellent. And we're looking forward to it. And as I said earlier on, guys, in the chat function, please share your thoughts and comments. Even if you have ideas, please share them because we'd love to probably interact with, it, with the audience as we go throughout the webinar. So this is the uh, webinar series is, our, is completed, but we have one more. It's a concussion awareness webinar, which is coming up over the next week or so. So we're looking forward to that. But then we're going into our spring webinar series. And you can see there's a plethora of webinars coming up. So uh, all these webinars are recorded and they're all available to view afterwards. And our LGFA YouTube channel. But if you want to book onto any of those webinars, guys, please log on to the LGFA website and uh, you can log on to those uh, and register for those webinars. So we have plenty of topics coming up, interesting topics. Uh, so we hope that you look forward to them. And then we, we also hope you're, looking, you're enjoying the webinars thus far that, we're, that we have in, in the winter series. So tonight's webinar is uh, looking at how to manage the workload in, in, a, in a session. And I suppose I'd like to start by saying, like Vincent and, my, and myself, we're not, uh, we're not going to profess that we're sports uh, science, you know, uh, sports science in terms of like, or experts in this area, but we are going to give our experiences as coaches uh, in this webinar, in this topic, and come across various challenges that we've come across and how we've overcome them. So uh, we, we, we look forward to probably your interaction as well. So please, guys, use the chat function as we go along, and we can share our experiences. If you have any questions, please use the chat function. So our outcome for tonight, by the end of this webinar, coaches will be able to have a basic awareness of the underlying principles regarding managing workload of players and to apply basic strategies, strategies that we have used to monitor workload of players. So we're hoping that uh, you're looking forward to the session. So what do we mean by managing workload? Okay, so it's monitoring the amount of training and our competition a player takes on in, to enable them to recover sufficiently and perform better over a longer term. So you'll probably hear this, this, this term, you know, widely used in terms of less is more. And I suppose we as coaches need to recognize when is the time to push players and when is the time to pull back? So recognizing that I think is a, is a, is a key skill to have as coaches in terms of coaching teams. Rarely will you see players perform to their full potential if they're continually getting injured or they're, I suppose, getting fatigued or tired early. So we need to be cognizant of the training loads or how our players are responding to our training. And that's something we'll try and, I suppose, touch on throughout the, um, the webinar this evening. But again, like previous webinars, it all depends. And on this topic, you could do a, a webinar in each, shall I say, time of the year or, or for championship or leagues or whatever it may be pre-season. And we do have a webinar done by our colleague, Kleena O'Connor. She's done a webinar specific for pre-season. So if you're, you're planning for your pre-season uh, over the coming weeks, Kleena O'Connor on the LGFA YouTube channel has a webinar specifically for that. So please go and refer to that over the coming weeks if you get an opportunity. But it depends because monitoring workload is dependent on a lot of exter external factors. What I mean by that is that frequency of games. So you could be in a situation during the year whereby you might have games back to back over a four or five week period. So that's going to depend on how you monitor the, the, the workload of your players. It could be the time of year. It could be clashing with other external factors. What I mean by that is you could have players who are involved with exams or final year exams in college. So that will then determine how you manage your players around that time. The level of competition it could be pre-season, how you prepare for pre-season is different to how you prepare in season and how you prepare for championship that may be down the road. So again, a lot of things depend in terms of managing workload uh, uh, regarding um, that, that, that topic. But also other sports, you have a lot of players who are involved with other sports. So again, how do we manage all that? And I know Vinny, the acronym FIT is something that if people can take away tonight, even that's that simplistic acronym around uh, the FIT um, acronym. Do you want to explain what we mean by that? Yeah, fit, I suppose, the F is the frequency. You know, how often are you going to train maybe in between games or in the lead up to games or after games or maybe there's a break in, in competition for the season for whatever reason. So what is your frequency of training? And um, the intensity, the intensity all depends on, I suppose, what's gone before 
or what's coming after, or I suppose all of the variables that depend on the individual player themselves. So looking at the individual player and, and deciding what intensity they need to work at depending on what variables have co come and gone before and where they're at in their particular journey throughout the season. The time, so are you going to have a longer session, a shorter session, or what is the time of the season that you're at? And having a look at the, that factor as well and saying, you know, where are we at with the season? With the season, Have we kind of gone in an upward curve in terms of uh, our workload within sessions? and um, Have we plateaued? And what type of training do you need to do? You know, is do you need at a certain point to be, um, you know, to to turn up the volume, I suppose, or turn up the intensity in, in what you're doing, um, or you know, is the time of season where you really need to look at maybe having a bit more fun in your sessions, um, and giving the players just that little bit of a break from that intensity, um, within within the the, the session period, so to speak. So all of those factors, having a look at that FITT, and I suppose it was something that we would have borrowed from the world of health and fitness as well. Anybody on here uh, on the webinar who has um, who has come across that. But I suppose in terms of employing that particular acronym towards our training and managing workload within the training and looking at, I suppose, the bigger picture around it, that's something that we can really use as a tool in terms of planning uh, for our workload within sessions. And we'll probably, I suppose, hit that in, John, we'll go through a few sample scenarios later on and probably that'll come into play really. But I think that's a nice kind of thing. Even if you, get, even if you took that from tonight, that fit acronym in terms of the frequency of your sessions, the intensity and the time and the type of sessions. So thanks, uh, Vinny, for that. And I think we'll come back to that a lot more as we go along in, in, on, in the webinar. So in essence, what are we all trying to achieve as coaches? We're trying to ensure that where possible, our players can play to their optimal performance. They can be the best they can be. And how can we ensure that our players are on the field to play for the majority of the time? That they're not injury. They're not getting injuries on a regular basis. That, you know, that they're missing big games. So how do we achieve that? But I suppose for us as coaches, we just need to get that, the balance right. So there's, there's the training. There's the competition. There's the importance of rest and recovery. And what determines our decision-making around those aspects? And we'll go through a few scenarios short now that we'll, we'll give you all what we've done in these scenarios and maybe just what we've observed in our understanding of that will probably come into play, hopefully. So what can we do as coaches? You're probably saying, geez, Will and Vincent, well, what can we do to monitor workload of our players at a basic level, guys? Because we know there's a lot of coaches here who are coaching underage teams. There's coaches here who are coaching different levels. And you've all got different, I suppose, uh, access to different resources. But let's keep this basic and simple. And if we keep it basic and simple, I think we'll be okay. Let's monitor the work done by our players in our sessions. So how can we monitor the volume of work they're doing in our individual sessions? So like the time, you know, how long are so over the week are they are they involved in sessions? You know, uh, are, how long are the individual sessions? How long are, are they involved in coaching sessions throughout the week? And I think they say, you know, with underage, you know, if you're, if you're doing more uh, time than your age, then you're, you're probably, you know, overshooting the mark a small bit. And distance, volume, in terms of what distances are they covering in your sessions. Also, then we need to seek feedback on the work completed from players on the work completed in their sessions. So there's the external of how do we monitor what our players are doing in our sessions. Then there's the internal of us finding out from the players, well, what work, how they find them. So from a, a rate of exertion or effort or even enjoyment. So rating that, and we go through that in a few minutes now in more detail. And then there's tra tracking the subjective wellness of the player. So things like fatigue and sleep and mood and, and muscle soreness. And we'll show you in the scenario shortly how we've utilized all these things. But the point I'm trying to make here is if we as coaches have a basic understanding um, of how to monitor the workload of our players using these simple techniques, Joe, I think we're in a good place. But I'm going to make another point. Having loads of data is brilliant. But what you do or in, how you interpret that data is more important. So don't worry, guys, if you jump, if you have all this data and you don't know how to interpret it. There's loads of people out there that you can engage with or, or get advice from. And don't be afraid to get advice from people if required. I've been involved in team myself. And there's teams who are, are players who are injured. Okay. And the, the, there's loads of data coming back from the, you know, regarding their injury and what's it about. But I will ask the physio for, okay, for advice on how best to manage that player. I won't, you know, bluff it. 
I will ask for and I'll seek advice where required. Okay, so we'll go through these in a few minutes. Okay, so now we want th those three things. What I would think are basic level is what we should be doing as coaches. Okay, but what kind of I suppose instruments or strategies could we use? to probably help us gather that data or monitor that workload. So let's look at it. This is what I use myself in sessions, player profile. So you're all, you know, the start of the season is coming up in a few weeks time or maybe this week or next week. Then why not do a simple player profile now? Find out what players are doing, okay? Find out where they're based. Are they in college up the country? Are they working in an, in a, you know, uh, an hour or two away from where they live or where the training is going to occur? Find out what's their strengths, what they need to improve on, and also injuries. And we go through this in more detail a, a bit shorter, but that's just something you could do. You don't have to have the latest app to do this. You can just do a simple Microsoft form, send it through a WhatsApp, and there you have it. There's all your data. So there's information you're gathering. And we, we'll show you how this is all help now in our scenarios coming up. So I won't go into too much detail on it now. There's a wellness questionnaire. Again, this is something I've used myself. So, and I normally use this around pre-session. I, and I, again, I'll show you in a few seconds where we've used this and, and how, how it informs our, 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 our thinking uh, in terms of our sessions. So finding out, okay, well, are they sleeping well? What's their stress levels like? What's their fatigue levels like? And for me, what I normally use it for is their muscle soreness. So if we played a big game or had a tough session, I want to find out how they're feeling, their body. How's their body? Is, is it, is, are their muscle sores or is there a Dom's effect uh, uh, coming across there? Or if, I, if you don't want to use a questionnaire, you can use cones. So at a start of a session, I might put out four different color cones. And I would ask a simple question, guys. If I was to ask you, you know, how sore is your body after playing the game on Sunday? Could you please go to the color cone that is applicable to how you feel? So the green cone could be very, very sore, but the red cone could be very, you know, I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. And the white cone could be, I'm in between. So I play five cones. So very sore, sore, not too bad. Okay. Yes. You know, I'm feeling, you know, not too bad. I'm feeling good or I'm feeling very good. And there straight away, Bang, I know straight away where my players are at. And therefore, then I will make adjustments. And I'll go through it in more detail shortly. You can monitor heart rate throughout a session to see what the workload's like. Now, that could be hit and miss because players mightn't be able to take their heart rate properly. Or also, you know, that, that, that may be a factor there. They mightn't have the, the equipment required. Or there's this rate of perceived exertion scale. As you see up here on the top right, that's a very, uh, uh, an RPE scale. In terms of, I suppose, how do they find the session? So getting feedback from players and how they found the session. Was it easy? Was it hard? Was it extremely hard? And what you could do is you can print that out for your players and they can have it. You know, you can give it to them and say, look, guys, you know, let's give a bit of information about it. You could have it up in the wall in the dress room. And after a session, you could ask them, guys, you know, out of 10 or you could have it out of five. You can adjust this to it, whatever you want. You can ask them, well, how are they feeling? Okay, or how they found that session. And again, it's giving you... I suppose, direct feedback in terms of how they found the session in terms of workload. If you don't have the chart, guys, use color cones. Again, lay out the cones, one being very, very, very easy, and the fifth cone being very, very, very hard. Okay, and then you have your, your intermediates in between that. Again, fairly simplistic ideas that you can do for you to gauge the player's feedback. Remember what I said earlier on? Finding out what the work done in a session is the external. This is internal now. This is the wellness. This is the pre perceived um, exertion of players. So you're getting feedback from players. And if you're very, very lucky, guys, and you have the resources and you have a, a GPS tracking system, which is a global positioning, positioning systems, um, if you are very lucky to have access to them, then they're great because they'll assist with monitoring the distance covered with your players and also the speed profiling. What I mean by that is, you know, how often do they walk the session? How often do they have low uh, speed running, medium speed running, high speed running? And also how long were they, how often were they sprinting in the session? So they get, that gives you real detailed information that you can help you with, okay? So there are just a few ideas that you know you could use to monitor the workload and we're going to show you where these came into play in certain scenarios that we've come across that we're going to present to you now in a few minutes but just simplistic ideas guys that will help you and you can do this in any age group 
In the age group, you can pick and match of what suits your age group and you can modify it to suit, I suppose, and be appropriate to your age group as well. Um, so there's just a few things. And with the wellness questionnaire, that only needs to be through five or six questions. That's all. That's all it is. Very simplistic. You don't have to have the latest apps to do this stuff. And Microsoft Forms could do it. Send it through WhatsApp and you have your information ready, readily available to you. Okay, so there's just a few ideas. Vinny, what's your thoughts on that before we move it on to the scenarios, uh, scenarios and stuff? Suppose one of my takeaway messages from that particular slide, William, is, is that information is key and harnessing that information from the players, knowing the players. So you as a coach can then make an informed strategic decision as to what the workload within that session is going to look like for the group and indeed the individual player. Knowing the player, knowing what their circumstances, yeah. knowing how they currently feel. Um, and and using that information to to ensure that they're I suppose avoiding injury within your sessions and that they're maximizing their performance within your sessions and I suppose a key factor as well as ensuring that they're having fun throughout their sessions as well and mm -hmm. um, so the, my key takeaway from that is that the tools are there you know utilize them as William said they're not it's not uh, you don't need to be hugely tech savvy to employ some of these strategies but the key thing is knowing and having that information that you can create your sessions and monitor that workload within them um, without overloading on them. Yeah, and I think what it does, guys, it, it raises your awareness. It because you're observing this from your players on a regular basis, you're now getting to know your players, as Vinny said, it's raising awareness. So you might have a player that come and go, they, you know, and we go through a few scenarios in a minute. So you're now knowing your players. You'll be able to spot things without even asking questionnaires going forward because of that simplistic manner. So as we I said, a that, question in there, William, yeah. uh, from, from Robert. Uh, is there a different approach for under 16 girls? No, like, I suppose, again, it's, 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 it's all age appropriate and how you apply it in terms of, like, I suppose in terms of coaching female players, they want to be involved in the decision-making process. They want to feel they can give a bit of uh, input into the session. So they love this sort of stuff. I think players love this sort of stuff, in particular female players. They love, you know, providing this information for coaches. I know from the Get It For Teens, you know, program that we're doing, teenage girls they, uh, or even players in general they love providing information because they want to know why they're doing what they're doing so the more information they can provide and the more the sessions are tailored towards their needs they love that so i would say the simple thing of the player profiling the wellness questionnaire the perceived um or the rate of perceived exertion scale those things are very simplistic things you can you can implement very easily because the RPE scale helps you uh, identify what is the tolerance level uh, in sessions as a that. So all these can be done, guys. It's just you know your group, and you know which suits best. But even, as I say, going back to under 16s, you don't have to use questionnaires or scales. You can use cones and ask a straight question. Tell me, how hard do you find that session? Stand beside the cone that's applicable to how you feel. That's as simple as how it could be. I hope that helped. Okay, let's go into a few scenarios. So we're going to give you a few scenarios that hopefully you've come across as well. Um, and, and please, guys, share your own thoughts. Share what have you done. Uh, I hope, Robert, that, that answered your question there. And please, guys, share your own thoughts and strategies. Have you done anything different to what we've tried? Uh, and we'll see how we get on as we go along. So let's now move it on to the next one. So scenario one, Vinny, what is it? So you hope to commence training over the coming weeks. What are the key things to consider before you get on the pitch? And like this again is, is just creating awareness. So what I would say to coaches here tonight, you need to first of all acknowledge that the majority of players will not be properly prepared or ready for a spike in training load. They, they won't be. Um, you need to be also aware that players will be at different stages of fitness. There'll be some players that did something over the off-season. They might have did a few runs. They might have been cycling. They might be doing swimming. And they're in, a good, they're in, a, in an okay shape. And there's some players that have done nothing. So we have to be very much aware of that. But we need to know that our players may not be in a position already to meet the demands that's going to be put in them from a physical, but also a psychosocial point of view. So what I'm saying there is you may see players tire early or easily in the first few sessions. You may see players having low concentration in the first few sessions. And therefore, that could lead to a higher risk of, 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 of a sustaining injury. So the first thing I'm saying to you is, Acknowledge that. If, that's, if you only do that, that, that's a great start, okay? Then, what can we do as coaches? So I'll give you two examples. 
Number one, the player profile. The player profile here now is a huge, huge, huge benefit to you. Okay, so you need to find out what have they done. You need to find out, you know, uh, where they're based. You need to find out where they, you know, wh are they in college? Are they working? You need to find out have they got injuries? What injuries do they have? What advice have they been given to come back? Okay, and all, and what are they doing other sports? So that's one thing you could do as coaches in this scenario. And number two, fitness testing. Find out what their base level is. Okay, find out what their current levels is compared to normal data, but that will define how you will approach your training going forward. And I'll give you an example of that in a few seconds. So having all the data is one thing, how you use it is, is another thing. And that's important. So I would say prior to your going on to pitch uh, in a few weeks time, player profile, fitness tests where possible will help in motivating. And I think that fitness test could be very simplistic in nature as well, just in charge. So I don't know if any, is there anything different or is there anything coming through the chat function that people want to clarify in that one? Uh, people are still typing away there, William. Just one thing that, that I would take away from that is that it recognizing as a coach that not one size fits all, yes. that your players are going to come back at different stages and different mindsets as well. And possibly their, their own personal circumstances may have changed over the intervening period between the last time you saw them and this session as well. So it's about recognizing that. And like, I mean, I suppose I don't think there's anybody who's going to be on the webinar here and um, watching that hasn't come across that coach, you know, who at, when the, the when training is commencing does have that one size fits all approach. And it's like, right, everybody, you know, we're going to do sprints for, you know, all all night and next of all people are coming off the, pit, the pitch not having enjoyed what they did and probably half the half the team are probably going to be suffering from injuries because the workload was too much for certain people within the group because the coach didn't do that background um information gathering yeah. um, and i suppose that's something that i would take away there there's a few little bits coming in on the chat there william i'll just read read them out so richard is, is on there thanks richard and um, have you any examples of a sample fitness test for an adult club scenario yeah please guys my email is william.harman at lgfa.ie i'd love to you know give me an email richard and i'll send you on a few examples that we'd have um but like you know richard i'll give you a simple example you know of a fitness test you know that we did uh, a 1.2k K, K, kilometer run okay so set out four cones 400 meter track okay 400 meter each side ask them to do it okay three times and time it send me on your times and i'll see and, I, and, I, and i'll show you where that comes into play later on that 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 what that fitness test did for us going on so we set out we say right guys we set out the four cones they're down the down the put, football pitch on a saturday they're there they're set up the four cones go down uh, run it as fast as you can, okay, three, three laps, 1.2K, okay, and send on your time to me. And I'll show you how that informed our decision-making going forward. But there's other, there's loads of other fitness tests you could be doing there, Richard, but send, I'll send an email to me and I'll send on you one or two other examples. But I just gave an example of how simple it can be because sometimes the fitness tests have to be applicable to what you want to get from them too, Richard. So you can do loads of fitness tests, but if it's not applicable to your game plan or what you want your players to do, then I don't know was it beneficial. So... I want my players to play a certain way. So therefore I felt that that test was applicable to what I wanted players to do. So uh, it's just something to be aware of as well. Okay, Vinny, is there anything else before we move it on? We'll just move it on. So just remember folks, just type in the chat there. Once the scenario goes up, you can get typing. So uh, scenario two, it is your first session of the year. How will you approach it? Yeah, so like, I think I, Vincent Gabbard is, I think it's a researcher, Gabbard. Guys, Gabbard is, is, a, is a very high-level you know, high researcher in this area of managing workload. I would advocate anybody, guys, over the coming days, type in his name and a lot of stuff, very good stuff comes up on this topic. But he, he, he highlighted that unsuitable training regimes with a sudden spike, a sudden spike in training load can result in a higher non-contact and a soft, in, a soft tissue injuries. So that's something we need to, that's the first point I'm making is, okay, don't go mad. <laughs> don't go mad tomorrow night if it's your first session back. And I'll show you a graph in a few minutes to give you a, a visual on that. So we now know from our performance profiling who is active, who's inactive, who's got an injury, and where the players are at. So I would first of all say is use that data to inform what you're going to do in your first session in terms of if there's players coming back from injury, find out what advice has been given to them or seek advice on what they should be doing in that session. How many times, guys, do players come back from injuries and they go back and they do the full session, you know, 
and they're straight into it. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, they've got the same injury again. The point I'm trying to make is the player will be eager to go back and do a full session, but you need to say, hold on a second. You're back. You're out for the last four weeks. This is where you're at. You need to be doing this first before you can start doing the, the, the full training intensity. So just small things like that. I would say gradually introduce players back into activity. Be progressive in your, in your load. And I'll show you that a graph in a minute. So it's all gradual. So tell how many times we do uh, preseason training and it's crazy stuff. It's just mad. No ball and it's high intensity. And, it's, you know, it's, and then in four weeks time, we ask ourselves, why do we have so many players injured? Again, I think it was Gabby that says, if, if you increase the load by more than 15% in, in, um, in, 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 in your weekly sessions, then there's a risk. I think the risk goes up by 50% in terms of injuries. So just very important to be very much aware of that in terms of, you know, increasing that load. And, that, and, and uh, if you go too fast too soon, it's a huge risk factor for injuries. Injured players, as I said, get the, get the data and, and, and give them the recommendations. But also I would probably advocate for next year is I would promote off season. It doesn't have to be structured, just promote it. Girls, go away and go for your swims or your cycles or your runs, you know, and just make sure they're kept active because when, if they kept active, they're more likely to be able to, um, I suppose, manage the load when they come back. So I don't know, Vinny, was that helpful? I hope it was. But I suppose the, the learning point I have is don't go mad too soon and don't have that massive spike. Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, I, I would also just like to echo what William said there. Like, I mean, if anybody has the time, um, I'm certainly not a sports scientist, but I've done a lot of reading on Gabbett's work um, and it's fantastic. And it is further reading, I suppose, from to take on from, from this webinar. Um, so a simple Google will bring up so many graphs and and so much information uh, from him. But I suppose from from the last slide there, I mean, a very simplistic way that I would look at it is with you and your team start at the bottom of the mountain and it's a process to get to the top. Do not try and start at the top because the only way is to fall down. OK, so try and start at the bottom of the mountain and realize that it's a process to get to the top. It's 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 uh, te only teamwork will get there. Um, and um, and if you try and do it any other way, you're, you're in for a fall. You are. And if you look at this graph here, guys, this is actually the first three weeks. If, and I'm going to go back to Kino O'Connor. She delivered a, a webinar specifically on pre-season training this time last year. It's up on our LGFA YouTube channel. I, I would recommend to go on that. It's excellent. But she has this graph in it. And I think it's an excellent graph because this is the first three weeks of a pre-season. And sometimes you'd see, oh, geez, it should be high level straight away for the first you know, five or six weeks, but it's not. What she's advocating, or what Gabbard and, and I suppose all the high level, I suppose, people in this area are, are advocating, that it should be a balance between hard, easy, rest, and moderate sessions. So if you look at the first, so next Tuesday night, we're starting our training. Look at it down here on the left. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, a moderate, easy to moderate session. Again, look at the progression. So look at the first three sessions in the week. There's a, a nice simplistic, very low level progression. So that it's not a massive spike. There's a nice progressive feel to the training. Then on the, the following Tuesday, okay, let's just bring it down a small bit. But hey, it's still a bit higher than the following Tuesday. So you see now they're progressing, but it's still not the same intensity as, as, the, as the Sunday session. But look, on the Thursday session, now that's our first hard session. So a week into it, they've experienced their first hard session. And let the players know it's a hard session. Tonight now, guys, we're going to push it on. Tonight's going to be a push up because we've done it. We have a week underneath our belt. You know, we've, we've progressed our load. We're now in a position where I feel we can, we can increase it a small bit. But it's not a massive spike. It's only, a, again, look at the percentage. Look how much is, it has progressed on. So it is a hard session, but it's not a massive spike in terms of training load. But again, then, look at the following Saturday, Sunday. It's lesser in intensity. Even the following Tuesday is lesser again. But look at the following week's training then. Week three. We're going to do two hard sessions together, back to back on the Tuesday and the Saturday or the Thursday and the Sunday. And then let the players know that. But then again, on the following Tuesday, you're going to bring it down again to a, a moderate session again. So what you're doing is you're having that alternate hard, easy, rest, moderate session going on. There's no major spikes going on and there's no major, major uh, uh, I suppose, dips going on as well. So it's nice and, and the progression is, is up and down, but it's, it's all interlinked with each other. So that's first a very good learning point here. And what I would say here, guys, is vitally important is that it's taking away the monotony of, um, I suppose they say, high intensity training over a period of time brings monotony and also higher risk of injury because people lose motivation, they get bored with it. So this is the 
Um, Keen O'Connor in her web webinar, uh, it's on the LGFA website. I would say, guys, give a look at it. Um, it's excellent in terms of the preseason work, but just gives a visual of what we mean by don't go crazy too soon, be progressive, and then put in the hard sessions at the right time when the players can manage the load. William, just on the on the last slide there, Finton um, has come in there. Um, and in terms of it being the first session back, so he said, number one, welcome back. Two, uh, time for the players to socialise and chat, which is extremely important. Um, I suppose that's half the reason why they're there. Uh, caution on intensity, but keep interest and motivation high. And number four, get feedback. Yeah, get feedback. And Finton, as we go along the other scenarios, you'd see the point you've made coming to the fore. So we're you know, so well done, Finton. I think you're ahead of the game already. So we're, you'll see those points coming to the fore again. Okay, Vinny, let's go to the next one. Thank you very much, uh, Finton. Please, guys, share your thoughts. We're here to learn. Another one, okay, actually, Vinny. William, uh, James has come in there. Um, do you share this with the players and show, show them the schedule? So are you, are you involving them in that process? Yes, and I would, I would show them the process. I would always uh, show the, the schedule that we're about to achieve. Um, is it with James? Yeah, so I'd always uh, share with the players what we're, what we're going to achieve over the month. And I would also let them know when the hard sessions are going to happen. Yeah, you know what I mean? And like, you know, some players are going, geez, we do a hard session. The next one's easy. So like, players like that. They don't know what's coming next at times as well. So, um, but it's good to have that feedback and, and, to, and to show them. Because girls want to know why. If they know why, They'll buy into more and they'll, they'll give more effort. And when they've gone given great effort, they'll achieve their performance. Okay, next one, Vinny. We'll, we'll move around to the next one. Thank Brilliant. you very much, James. Thanks, folks. Keep, keep engaging with the chat as well as, as we're talking. Uh, scenario three, how do we manage the workload of a player who has a lot of training and games in a short period of time? Okay, so first of all, the, this player could be involved with a, with a team at high level and they could be just have a lot going on. You know, they're, they're playing through their club and their county. They could have a lot of games coming on over, over back to back. Or this could be a player who would have loads of other sports as well. And they just have a lot of a workload going on in terms of games and training. And I suppose we do know that the ability to sustain that high level of load uh, and staying healthy is required to, to peak at performance. But we need to be aware, guys, in order to have that tolerance level, that takes time. So we can't expect players to be ready for all this high level and constant games and, and constant high level training and games. You know, we can't expect that if they haven't built up the tolerance is what I'm saying. So just something to be very much aware of. It takes, it could even take a few years for that, for players to, to build up that tolerance. That's just something to be aware of, number one. So what can we do as coaches? I would definitely monitoring the training and, and, and the competition weekly. So I would start doing this weekly with this player. And again, this is where... Um, you know, the wellness questionnaire would come in in terms of finding out how they're feeling, you know, how what's their, uh, their fatigue levels like, you know, what's their muscle soreness like, you know, what's their mood like, what's their stress levels like. Just keep it on top of that, okay? That's important because that will then determine what you will do for that player. So if the player is not feeling great form, then you say, come here to me, do the warm-up, do the skill development, and you know what, leave off the rest of the session, you're good. So you're, you're just gauging that player and you're monitoring. Make sure that that, player has a complete rest day in their week that they're, they're, there's a guaranteed rest day where they're doing nothing else you know, there's a complete rest day and that would be just for you to be aware of this and give that advice to your player listen you have a lot going on and if maybe if it's your session that needs to be pulled aside and say listen you're not coming to my session tonight you need a rest you've i watched your i've seen your player profile or your wellness questionnaire i've seen that you're out every night of the week Do you know what tonight no train tonight for you you know, so you're taking a proactive approach to your player saying, listen, you recognize the importance of rest and that complete rest day. And then obviously you can value the, the number of hours that person is training and the number of uh, uh, the time that they're doing. Go back to fit acronym. Again, just monitoring all that is vitally important. And then you can alternate the hard, the easy and, and the moderate sessions as well. As I said, if you do intensive training over, if that player is doing intensive training all the time, it's going to lead to a high monotony level, which leads to a high risk of injury. So you have to monitor that. So if you know that she had a hard session somewhere else yesterday, then the session she's with you is, needs to be either very easy or she's getting that complete rest. Okay? If she does another hard session with you, then now the motivation is going to be challenged. So just something to be aware of. I hope that gave you a bit of an insight. But for me, if you continue to observe players' wellness, then you don't need questionnaires because you know when they come in the gate how they are. You know it and how they play. So it's just something to be observant of. Vincent, I don't know. Um, 
Does that make sense? And anybody, any questions, please, or any thoughts, share in the chat function. Yeah, for me, it's 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 again as a coach, um, and and using the time to to gather that information and, and and knowing those individual differences in your players and their circumstance and everything that goes around the session that could potentially impact what happens in the session. Yeah. And um, those external factors, you know, that influence the internal. Um, and it's about again as as a coach to not use that one size fits all. And again, reinforces everything that we've said over the last. A uh, number of slides as well, and that there um, backs it up. We have a couple of in on the chat there. Um, so, Francis, um, thanks very much, Francis. What's an acceptable amount of hours when you think they should miss out on a session? Uh, the, I you know researchers, I saw somewhere a research saying that if a player is doing more than their age, then they're doing too much, you know. Uh, and I think that was interesting. I think it was Gabby that said that. I you know I must, I must look at that, but I think if they're doing more than their age, then they're doing too much in a week. Um, and I think that was a nice kind of parameter or guideline. And I think it was, you know, so, but I think, you know, that could be the other side too. <laughs> you know, for 18 years of age, you're, you could be, you could be under pressure as well. So just something like that. Um, so I think really you have to just observe that, but I think some players can manage. And I go back to my point. Players, if they want to achieve top performance, should be able to sustain high loads uh, and stay healthy. But, you know, so some players might be able to manage that, but it's you recognizing when is the right time to say stop and take a step back, and maybe it's an easy session you need to do, or maybe they need to take a complete rest. But I think if you monitor Francis, they're continually monitor him, and uh, you will be able to gauge what's the right decision for your players based on the feedback they're giving you. Okay, I hope that helps. And it, it all goes back to, it depends, because every player is different, Francis, in terms of that. Okay, Vinny, we move on. Thank you very much, Francis. We have two more left, and we'll, um, we'll take it from there. So you've just played a tough championship match on Sunday. Yeah. Next session is the Wednesday. What type of session will you plan? Okay, right. Now, it very much depends here. Because let, let's say, hypothetically speaking, that our next championship match is in two weeks' time. Okay? So now, you need to balance this right because you need to make sure that you don't lose your training effect. Because sometimes, you know, between games, we kind of, you know, do all the easy sessions between in, in championship matches. Or you, know, you make sure you don't get injured. But you make sure they have to, they have to do... Uh, you know, a good session, one or, one or two good sessions before the next match to keep that training effect high and that low. So I would say, you know, if you want, I'd be, just, I'll, I'll tell you what I did here. Okay, so I would like, ra I'd rather my players, number one, I find out how they're feeling. So let's find out what their muscle soreness is like, how they're feeling after the game. So that's my first thing I do. I do that, number one. Then based on that, it'll determine what I'll do Wednesday night. I'd be thinking that, based on that, I would like to probably think that that session is going to be a moderate session, easy to moderate session, because I'd like to make sure that the Friday night session is a real good session, okay? Because the game is deemed hard, if, it's, if the feedback comes back and says that, then I'm going to do a moderate session, and then I may do a kind of high moderate to a hard session maybe on the Friday or the Saturday, maybe on the Saturday, okay? So therefore, guys, I'm gauging the, the feedback from the players. So that's number one. I get the gauge by the fee feedback from the players. You always need to be aware of some players have played the full game. Some players have come on as a substitute early. Some have come on as a substitute late in the game. And some players have played no football. They played no game. So you have to take that into account as well. So what would I do? I send out my wellness questionnaire and I find out where they're at. Or what I've done myself is that I've laid out the cones before the session starts. So I went to the session with two game plans or two session plans in my head. A is if they're feeling good. B if they're not feeling so good. But in this, in this scenario, what I did was I sent out the questionnaire and they gave back the feedback. But there was actually three groups then in the session on the Wednesday night. One group who were the guys who were very sore. You know, they, were, you know, they weren't feeling, you know, they, they were probably had a few, you know, they maybe felt that you know, they might have one or two injury issues coming along. Okay, right, girls, there's no need for you to do the full session. You're going into the gym on the bike, you know, do a few exercises, foam rolling. That's your session for tonight. Group two. Okay, you've come back of saying you're not too bad. You're feeling a bit sore, but you're not too bad. Right. You're doing the warm-up, and you're going to do the skill development section with us, but you're done then. You're done. You're done for the session. That's it. You're, you're finished. And then the guys who felt very good or the people who haven't played, played no football, right, you're doing a full session. So now you've seen how the information informed how we went about our session. Now, I've done that in cases whereby I've got the information prior to the prior to. The, to the, to the session because it was championship and I want to make sure I want to do a good session the weekend so I want to make sure I do this right or I might have done it just at the start of a session you know it might be after a league game and I have another league game coming up the, uh, two weeks later 
Then I might play out the cones and I'd ask him, stand on the cone and how you feel. And I'd modify the session then or adjust it based on that. I might be taking out one or two activities to make sure the load is not too high. So I hope that gives you just a few little tips on how to manage these sort of scenarios. Um, Vinny, does that, you know, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think, I mean, we, we referenced uh, throughout, you know, takeaways from, from this evening. Um, a huge takeaway for certainly for, for myself is that grouping of players. Um, you know, you, uh, you know, we're working in an environment where, vo- where we're all voluntary coaches. We haven't got the professional set up to break them into anything more than three groups, I suppose, and that we need to cut our cloth accordingly and maximise what we can do within a session. Um, so I think a huge takeaway for, for me is, is that um, process there of, you know, first of all, garnering the, the, the feedback and the, the feeling of how everybody is and then categorising them and then assigning them appropriate tasks for their workload within the session. I think that's a really, really good strategy to employ, William, um, and it's something I'll certainly take away um, over the next um, the next year or so. There's a couple in there in the chat um, um, from Fergus. Um, the amount of sports girls are doing in school is a huge factor. I'm finding more and more that in reality, schools do not encourage girls to miss school sessions or school matches so the onus is on us to work around the school workload and never see never see it reciprocated yeah and i would say there is you do what's right for your players and sometimes you know we'd love that everybody would be communicating as coaches um for you know in terms of that but that's not the reality of the situation whereby communication might be low but if you are aware of all this information then you need to do the right thing by the player and i can guarantee we get more back from the player so I'm just saying to you is sometimes we have to take, sometimes we're always saying, oh, it's someone else is the problem or some, but we can't control the uncontrollables. If other people want to force or, you know, put pressure on players to get their sessions, then that's something we can't control. But what we can control is what we do for the player. So if I know that she had a tough game today in school, you know, then I'm going to say leave off the session tonight. She got her training through the game today. So what she does tonight is not going to improve or develop her any further. If not, it could actually go the opposite direction. So I think as coaches, what I'm trying to say here is, is you, you have all that information and data available to you. Now, Fergus, you're aware of that. Then what will you do with that data as a coach yourself? That's the point I'd be making, okay? Um, because they're, they're trained high level. Um, so that's just so I hope we help out with that one. A few more in there, uh, William. Um, also this year, our, our under 13 girls will have Gaelic... Uh, football and soccer games on a Sunday should they choose this stage assuming they play full games again you, you the, like all you do is you know if they have games going on you know you don't want to be putting pressure on that player so you say listen play, 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 go play the soccer or whatever and try it out and do so I would be saying really again is you need to probably take the pressure and, I, and actually it's the next slide here it's the, it's the next one we're going into so if you don't mind Vinny I'm going to answer that one here because like the scenario here I think is applicable to that question so you notice a lot of your players are doing exams at the moment, okay? And, and how do you approach the next session with, with your group? Or they have a lot of external factors going on. So what I mean by it, we as coaches need to be aware, like, like highlighted there, is that, the, that there's a lot of non-sporting activities. And like other sports, like highlighted there, that's probably adding stress to players. So that girl, I'm sure, is probably going, geez, I don't know, will I go to football? Will I go, will I go to soccer? Why not take the decision out of her hand and say, listen, we have another match next week. You go play your soccer. Enjoy your soccer. You know, go on away and enjoy your soccer. Rather than putting pressure on the player to be with you. She's 13 years of age. You know, she's at hopefully another 13 years in, in Gaelic football. Um, if we're forced to make decisions too early, then she'd probably, you know, despise the sport and want to walk away from it. So let's keep that love for the game. And, and let's go you know, embrace it and say, listen, go play your soccer. We're back again Tuesday night. Come away back now Tuesday night. We'll go from there. The player will, will, will buy into that. But I'm talking here about non, non-sporting non activities as well. So work, family, friends, school, exams, they all have a, they all determine the pre-training fatigue, uh, sleep quality, recovery, motivation, and performance ultimately. And you, if you know your players well, you know the players are bouncing to training. They're always bouncing to training. But then all of a sudden you notice they're coming a bit late to training or they're just coming in before the training starts. And you might find out, well, why? Why is that? Do we punish the girl for being late for training and we give her laps? Or do we ask her why? It might be she's studying for exams. She's cramming things in. She's under pressure. 
And if you know that, you can say, listen, you have an exam next Tuesday. I won't see you. I, I won't see you on Sunday now. I won't see you Sunday. Focus on your exams, and we'll see you then on the, on the, on the following Thursday. So it's recognizing that players need to enjoy what they're doing and just recognizing that non-sporting activities could hamper uh, that enjoyment. So it's very important that they use your sessions where possible as a release even, you know. Um, if players want to be their best, they need to be fit, they need to be motivated and ready to play from a physical and mental point of view. So what I would say is enjoyment, going back to Finton's point, enjoyment is very, very important. If you enjoy something, you put the effort in. If you put the effort in, you will get your performance. OK, so sometimes players might use your sessions as a release from that non those non sporting factors. Just something to be cognizant of. OK, I hope I've answered the question and I hope I've answered the question in terms of this scenario as well. Vincent. Before we move on to the last one. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, William. Um, a few more uh, in there. Um, how could you from Anne? Thanks, Anne. Uh, Anna, sorry. Um, how would you manage grouping players in a session based on feedback after games if you're operating with small numbers in a panel? Yeah, well, again, it goes back to my point. I'm saying it all depends on your panel and your numbers. It all depends as well how many people you have helping out. You might be on your own or you might just have two of you. So, again, it all depends in, in your groups and the smaller numbers that you would have. Um, you might say, do you know what? The Wednesday night session, we'll just have a bit of fun here. You know, let's do a light warm up. Let's do a light bit of skill work. You know, we might have a bit of fun. We might have a kicking competition. We might have a, you know, a bit of fun. So you might do, you might actually do a, a moderate session with the whole group in that, can, in that scenario. Okay. I done that. So therefore I done the wellness and I found out that the majority group were kind of in between sore and, and a bit sore. So I actually abandoned the session and we actually just did a warm up and skill development and we had a bit of fun. So you could, you have the whole group in that. So you, if you can't divide the groups into smaller groups, then make the decision whereby the full group are possibly doing the, 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 a, a moderate session, okay? So you're adjusting your session to be, for, that you might do hard, you're now going to do a moderate session with the full group. Um, I was just lucky that I had other people with me to be able to do that, but you just, but the key to it is, is you're modifying your session based on what you've been, what's in front of you, okay? That's key. Um, so I hope, I hope, and I would say on the last scenario, you know, how would you find out if players are enjoying something? Ask them. Tell me, rate that out of 10 there, how you enjoy that session. What did you enjoy about the session? What do you not enjoy about the session? How many times have we asked players those simple questions? You know, how did you find the session tonight? There's a cone there, guys, out of five. Rate it. Stand on it. You know what I mean? Things like that. And I would say even avoid repetition as well. Um, again, as I said, don't have those hard sessions, same monotony sessions, you know, four or five in a row that demotivates, demotivates players. They're coming to your sessions to release energy, to enjoy it, Okay, we don't want to have those factors going on. And maybe sometimes just change the environment. Maybe on the Wednesday night, maybe go, okay, guys, we actually won't go out to the pitch. We'll go and play a game of pitch and put. Uh, and John, we'll come back on Friday night. We'll do a good session then. So there's loads of ways. It depends on your, on your scenario and the information you have available to you. Okay, Vinny, last one. Okay. Um, apologies. Uh, do you want to do that one there, William? Just yeah, no bother at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to show on the next slide a sample outline of the session. Very basic now, guys. I'll show you a very basic outline of the session. So you've done a recent fitness test. We'll just say you've done a recent fitness test. You have an idea of the fitness levels of your players. You plan to do three sets of tempo runs in the session in between the ball work activities. What I mean by tempo runs, they are runs that they do uh, over a certain distance, but the players are not going flat out. They're going about 85, 90% of their speed. Uh, they have their, so of their top speed, okay? So about 85, 90% of the speed over a certain distance, okay? But what are the key considerations you need to take into place? Uh, taking into account um, your, the information you have from the fitness test and where you're at. So I'm going to show it to you here. Okay, I don't know, can you see that again, Vincent? Kind of did, yeah. A bit good of a, stuff, good stuff. A bit of a technological so, <laughs> meltdown there for a second. But okay, so, so yeah, blind. yeah. So everybody, give a look at this. Give a look, and in chat function, if you have any thoughts, give a look at it. So the, I, this is a session here, for example, a sample session. And the, the outcome of the session is to improve tackling as an individual, as a group, and as a team. So we're going to start with ball familiarization. So the players just, you know, working with two balls, one ball, just nice and gingerly working on off left hand, right hand, up left leg, right leg. Very, you know, you know, changing direction, nice and gently, you know, getting ball familiarization, having one or two fun games as well, or, or, or activities, you know, the ball on the back or who can get to, to 10 first or whatever it may be. Then we do our dynamic one. 
Okay, so it includes all the various the dynamic stretching, your squatting, your lunging, your change in direction, your, your whatever it may be. Okay, so that's that's going to be your dynamic warm, warm up. Then we're going to do our tackle focus. So we'll do a bit of one on one work, a bit of three and three work. So that's a bit of the group work, uh, group tackling. Then we'll do a bit of six v six. So different activities just to bring progression into the session. So we're working on our tackling. But then we're going to do our tempo runs. So I'm going to do eight of them. Um, we're going to do it over, say, 80, 85 meters. And we're going to say, okay, guys, you have to achieve, you know, that distance within a certain time frame. So let's say, for example, 15 seconds, you have to get to 80 or 100 meters, okay, in that time frame. Okay, again, they're only going about 85, 90% uh, of, their, of their speed. So it's very important. Then we go back and do a bit of tackling again. But this time we're going to work on our game plan, a bit of counter pressing and a switching of play. Okay, so we're going back now with a bit of ball, but there's still a bit of work in that. Then we go back and do another six tempo runs. Then we go back and do a small side game, an overload game. What I mean by that is, you know, you have six forwards versus eight defenders, or you have 10, 10 defenders or 10 defensive players, and you have only eight forwards or eight attacking players. And then we go back and do another few tempo runs. But the point in the question I'm asking is, based on your observations, based on what we've learned tonight, what are a few things that you take into consideration? It's the point I'm making. So, for me, there's two things I take into consideration. Number one, I want to get those three tempos in, tempos in. But look at the first one there. They're over 80, 85 meters. Is there any reason why there's two different um, distances there? So if in the chat function, why have I got two distances there? Now that could be that could be very easy, and um, ninety meters and hundred meters. It could be very easy, whatever it is, whatever whatever distance you want to do, and you apply the, the appropriate time. But why have I got two distances? Is the first question I'm asking. Okay, the reason why I have two distances is because I'm going back to my fitness testing. I have two. I have got the, the sheet of players. Let's go back to my. Remember, I said my one point two k meter run. Remember that. Remember that, that I did, and they did the, the 400 meters three times, and they timed it. I know now that there's X amount of players at this bracket, and there's X amount of players down here. There's no point me asking these players down here to achieve, you know, the distance at these players, because these players would be, you know, they'd be more efficient in their running. They're in a better place in terms of their conditioning. They will achieve, achieve the macro at, at a faster rate. So they're going to put pressure on the guys down here. So you could have them, you know, Going kind of going 90, 95% to try and keep up with the guys who are going 85 to 90%, if that makes sense. So I have two groups going, starting at the same time, but one group going to 85 meters and one group going to 80 meters. Again, I'm managing the load of the players based on their conditioning, physical conditioning at that point in time, based on the information I got from the fitness test. Now, my second consideration and my final consideration is, right, how much work did we do in the tattle focus, the 1v1, the 3v3, the 6v6, how much work did they do in the tattle focus in the counter, the counter pressing, switching and play? And how much work did they do in the small sided games? That's going to determine whether I need to do the last set of tempo runs or not. If I feel that, you know what, they're in a good place, yeah, we'll do them. Or if I feel, you know what, they got a lot, there's a lot of volume there and there's a lot of distance covers, there's a lot of high speed running going on in those games, okay we leave off the tempo runs. Or if we're very lucky, I have a few players with GPS on and I'd be able to, after this session, do the full session, monitoring what the distance they covered and what their speeds uh, were throughout the session and their sprinting speeds. I'd be able to manage then, okay, what did they get out of the games and what did they get out of the runs and to see was there too much going on. And therefore, then I tailor the next session. So the point I'm trying to make is I'm now thinking about the workload and making sure what I've planned is not overdoing it in terms of the session. So I'm observing what's going on in the players. Vinny, I do know, does that make sense? Or um, have you any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. And again, you're, you're modifying as you go. Uh, as a coach, you're using your coaching eye. You're, you're making informed decisions. Um, in terms of the use of GPSs and stuff, and obviously we'd be very aware that um, that session is probably um, more targeted to, to people operating at a, at a higher level. Um, but I suppose just to reinforce the point that if somebody's utilizing a GPS, that maybe they have hit their distances and their speeds already at that point. It's at that point then as a coach that you make that decision. Okay, we're going to take out the last set of runs. They are not needed. 
Plus, we are risking injury, soft tissue injuries to our players because yes, we've yes. overloaded their workload. So we need to pair that back a little bit. Let's do something fun at the end of the session. Let's do something crazy at the end of the session just to, you know, that the players are going to enjoy something completely off the wall and not dangerous in any way, shape or form, just kind of something outside of, of, of the normal parameters of a training session that um, they're going to really enjoy and go home laughing because the work is already done. The workload has been achieved within the session and what you want to achieve is already there. That's excellent. So the, yeah, you've achieved it. So therefore, those last simple will just have something fun. You know, uh, so it's, it's, it's just something to monitor. I'm going to just go over this fairly fast because on Tina's um, webinar last year, she goes into this in more detail, but it's just an idea of how you can progress load in the session. So there's a few things going. The duration, you could have 60-minute session, 75-minute session. So you can change the duration of your sessions. I would say no more than 75 minutes in terms of the actual session is required, okay? Um, so just change the duration of it. How do we change load in terms of intensity? So let's look at the example here, kick passing drill. 40 meters run. So in session one, they do three sets um, of, a, of a kick pass over 40 meters, and they do a run, you know, a run after kicking the ball for, for 40 meters. They do eight of them. Okay. But look at session two, they do four sets. But you know what? We're going to do an extra six runs, okay, to increase that intensity and, and that load. Look at example two, small side of game. Session one, we do four sets of games for three minutes. If you've ever done a game whereby, you know, you have a, a 60, by say 30 uh, distance or um, zone, you've uh, 3v3 in it, a lot of high speed running, that's very difficult to do. If you did three minutes of that, you'd know about it. So we do four sets of that in this session, but next week we'll do four sets with four minutes. So now we're increasing the intensity and the load by just putting on the extra time there. You can change up by density to do more work, less time. For look at the example of the kick, kick passing drill again, 40 meters run. In session one, you do three, eight, um, um, should I say three, eight, eight, eight runs. So you do three sets of eight runs. And you have a two minutes rest in between. But next week, the, 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 the rest time is less. It's only 90 seconds. So again, you're changing the load. You're keeping the variety and the players are going to be motivated as a result. Something's very simple. Look at the option two. In session one, you four the cone. So when you're doing various activities and, and stuff, you four the cone. But you know what? Next week, you're going to make sure there's only three to cone because therefore they're, they're going to be more active and therefore their intensity is going to be higher as a result. And then also in terms of a linear and change of direction, it's very important that you include uh, these aspects in your training, in particular coming back uh, to your early season training because players are more likely missing these because when they're doing their running and stuff on the roads or on the bike or whatever, they're not changing direction and they're not sprinting. So it's very important we, we bring those elements into our sessions as we go along. But that's just an example of how you could change, I suppose, a session load as we go along. So Vinny, to wrap it up uh, tonight, I hope people took something from it. Just a few, I suppose, um, uh, take-home messages, and I suppose, and invite common load errors. Introduce simple techniques to monitor workload of players. So your RPE scale, your wellness questionnaires, even using the cones at the start of a session would, would help there. Listen and learn from your players, as Finton says. Get that feedback from the players. You could use questionnaires, you can use cones, very simple stuff. You can ask just even questions of the players. Find out how much are they enjoying your sessions and adjust your sessions accordingly. If you, if they, if you, if you know today that they're, they're feeling sore and tired, then adjust your session accordingly and have your plan B. If you're conducting your fitness tests, or your performance tests, ensure reflects the demands of the sport or your game plan or your players, and then use that data to manage your subsequent sessions. As I outlined, we had a fitness test. It was a 1.2 km. We use that to help us with our tempo runs. So it's just something to be very much aware of. Conduct sessions in a progressive manner. Advise huge spikes and, and, and troughs, making sure that the, if there is a kind of a, an increased intensity, it's not manic stuff altogether. There's a nice balance and progressive step to it. And keep your sessions fun and simple. So, Vinny, before we finish off, guys, if you don't mind in the, in the chat function, thank you very much for tonight. In the chat function, what did you take from tonight? What was your key take-home message? And Vinny, if I were to ask you, what was your take, key take-home message while we wait for people to come back? What would it be? Well, number one, I suppose, is, is knowing your, your, your players, knowing their situation, gathering that data, using those tools that we, that we referenced, um, recognising their individual differences and their, their external factors that may influence what happens internally in the session. Um, and I suppose use those incremental changes and those those adjustments i suppose it's going to clean a session there 
you know, bit by bit, you know, go, you know, don't try and have that spike initially if you are working with players um, from from a from a starting point um, or a low starting point. Work with them gradually, climb that mountain, um, rather than starting off at the top and falling down. Okay, I don't know, is there anything coming through? If there any questions or queries or any comments, guys, please in the chat function. We hope you enjoyed the session this evening. Um, if there's any learning or any questions coming through, Vinny, we give it 30 seconds and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, a few people typing away there, I can see. And um, thanks, James, uh, coming straight away. Um, they come back at different levels. That's James's takeaway, absolutely, yeah. And, and just even being aware of that, James, that's a huge, that's a huge plus tonight, uh, even just being aware of that. Very good. Um, Fergus, uh, thanks a million <laughs> to Will and Vinny. Uh, thanks, Fergus. Um, Colm, uh, session needs to be a bit, bit of fun also. Yeah, it needs to be fun and need to recognise when is the right time to bring a, a fun element into it. So, again, if you're, if you're gauging those wellness of the players, you just notice they're a bit tired or they're just a small bit demotivated or, you know what, then bring in a bit of a fun element just to bring up the, the shall I say, the, the energy levels again. Uh, Armour is in there. Um, learning about your players' different fitness levels and adjusting your sessions. Ease into your initial sessions. Yeah, exactly. And adjusting your sessions. And then if you are doing tempo runs or you're doing any bit of fitness work, then there's different levels applicable and appropriate to the level of fitness of the players in your group. Um, and that's, that's, and like, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just like, you know, and then you'll see players uh, uh, developing. You'll see players go from one group to the other group as the weeks go on but you're just not being crazy in what you're doing because one, one size don't fit all. So again, you are actually doing the right by your players and what you're trying to do. Uh, Robert says, a great idea of, of the wellness questionnaire and continually checking regularly on how they feel after a match using the cones. You um, the cones, yeah. You don't even have to have questionnaires. The cones are just as easy, yeah. Martina just says, thanks. Uh, Adele, uh, adapt the sessions for certain groups. If there's 12 to 15 players who have played 60 plus minutes, then they may not do the high intensity stuff on the Tuesday. Exactly. So therefore, just if you had a tough game on the Sunday, the following session, sometimes we always go, you know, we go mad, but maybe just, you know, that could be the down session. And then the Friday session could be a really good session then as a result. Okay. So it's just monitoring that, that, that should I say that moderate to high to low to, yeah. Uh, in terms of your, your intensity levels. We'll take one more, Vinny, and we, we'll wrap it up. We'll take one more. Okay, so Derek, um, come in with using feedback from the players to influence the workload. Yeah, that's... Yeah, right. using feedback, asking them, the more information you have, the more he'll inform how you do what you do. And um, I, I know from a female perspective in terms of sport, you know, they, once they know why you're doing what you're doing, they'll buy into it. But also they like to be involved in that decision-making process. They like to give their input. So, um, you know, utilize that in the right way. And as I said, you use the appropriate strategy that's appropriate to the level uh, of, of players that you're coaching as well. Okay. So on that note, uh, Vinny, uh, we'll wrap it up. We hope we wanted tonight, as I said, I go back to my original point. We're not sports scientists. You know, we're not okay experts in this area of workload or managing our workload. But we have as coaches, I suppose, come across various strategies and ideas as we went along ourselves as coaches. But however, we wanted to keep it at a basic level that you can go away tonight and say, okay, I have a better understanding of this area. There's one or two little things in terms of strategies I could use. And even if that helps you or informs you over the coming weeks, then I think we've done a good job. So, Vinny, if you want to uh, just sign off, um, I just want to say thank you very much to everybody. And hopefully we'll see you over the coming weeks with our up and coming webinars. Vinny? Yeah, thanks everybody for, for joining us here this evening. Um, make sure to check out the webinar series uh, coming over the next few weeks. And uh, Slán Live, Gramina, my wife. Thank you very much.